mob randomly attacks couple walking in Chicago. They said they were going to kill us. So it quite literally is an interracial couple apparently minding their own business when they were violently attacked by a mob. They say they were randomly attacked walking in downtown Chicago amid the teen takeover. Ashley and DJ said on Tuesday they had been looking for a spot to get food set at night when they found themselves trying to navigate a large crowd. People in the crowd pushed the couple. And when DJ stood up to them, a fight fighting broke out. As soon as they pushed me, I told DJ, hey, I said, they just shoved me. And he asked them, he was like, yo, don't shove her. Who shoved her? And as soon as he said that, everything went crazy. They said they were, they were going to kill us. The mob pushed Ashley to the ground and immediately turned on DJ to beat him. They robbed the couple, stealing their shoes, phones, and a pair of glasses, an Apple watch, and a hat. Video of the attack during the violent teen takeover of the city went viral. Oh, okay. So it was a, a mob of young black teenagers mercilessly beating an interracial couple. What is this teen takeover thing? Uh, it can, like four consecutive nights of large groups of teenagers in Chicago just rampaging through the city, setting fires and smashing windows and attacking people. I think they tried breaking into the Art Institute and got shot. Yeah. A couple kids got shot. Well, I don't know about getting shot, but they, they yeah, were they, trying to break into the Art Institute and there were well, shots fired. A couple kids did get shot. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two of them. And I thought it was because they were trying to break it. I'm not sure. Well, you don't yeah. want teenagers controlling your society. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Well, thanks, Ian. Yeah. You know, this is perhaps a racially motivated attack. It's not been described that way, but... Just oh, go, no, it definitely is. So to go yeah, to your was. point about the double standard, we don't know what the motivations were in Kansas City, but there's an assumption it had to be racial. We have pretty good evidence it might have been racial in Chicago, but we don't talk about that. Well, it, it, it's clearly... We right. can talk so, about it, it, it but it it's okay. Right. Well, yeah, it, it was clearly a racist mob attacking this interracial couple because, you know... You can talk about it, but just don't talk about it too much because then you're a racist and it's okay. The thing that offended me the most about what the mayor-elect said and others said was that these kids had no other choice for entertainment on a weekend because they come from deprived backgrounds and they are impoverished or whatever, which is totally No opportunities. No opportunities, right, for recreation. I guess the <sighs> parks were closed or something. I mean, it, it's Chicago has so much to do. And these kids have phones and they have cars and, you know, maybe they're, they have some other frustrations and challenges, but it it's, is, it's awful it to is, hear it excused like that. It is exhausting to hear such obvious bullshit shoved down your throat all the time. To hear comments like that, it is just, I, I can't describe it as anything other than just exhausting they don't have anything to do so they have to r ransack Look, the city give the, me a god the, li the likelihood that these people voted for this is like 99 yeah. percent this is not a young conservative couple sorry they probably either don't vote or vote democrat so i just like yeah we don't want violent mobs to break out but there's a, there, I'm, I'm torn right like if phil if you voted for the government to i don't know um give you a free car and then the government gave you a free car I'd be like oh wow look at that you know you voted and got a car like who's paying for it i have questions about like where it's coming from if you voted for the government to take your paycheck from you and then they did i'd be like well congratulations like you asked them to do it and they did you know it's like if i ask a guy I take the garbage out and he does it why would i be upset about it i don't like you know the metaphor I mean? of i voted for them and they're perpetuating the the violence so i'm responsible because I you voted for, you voted for Obama. I voted for Obama. And then I realized it was a mistake and yeah. then I didn't vote but for him again. With your argument, they'd be like, well, you're, it's because I of do. you that 2008 to 12 happened. Yeah. You, and you're that's responsible. A, that's a fact. It is. You it killed those kids. Like that's what yes, they Yes. My support for Barack Obama and what pissed me off and made me so ex extremely angry with Democrats was that, yes, I gave Obama the support he needed to fucking murder children but you did and that pisses didn't, me off well, yes i did technically yeah yes i did but you didn't do that with that intention of course not no. it doesn't matter if i give someone a brick and then they say hey give me that brick i say okay and they start hitting but someone any, then i'm gonna be like yo i shouldn't have given them that brick you that's gave the them the authority you gave me authority but any president would have had that authority that's that the time. reason that i feel terrible about voting for bush because of the, the war in iraq like that's why people like change their votes they're like they vote for someone because they're hoping for something the person they voted for gives them a pile of shit because that's what they do and then people are like well i don't want to vote for them anymore that's that's just the normal thing that people that's why people are and, so sick and, of the government and after so, that i didn't vote in 2012 or 2016 because i was like i don't want to be responsible for what these cocksuckers do, do you, and do you, then donald trump did a bunch of really great things with the economy and really great things with foreign policy to the point where i said this guy needs another term i mean the foreign policy stuff was so good 
that I was finally like, okay, this guy actually did these things. He also set up a clandestine drone network where he gave his generals authority to bomb that's, whoever they that, want in that's, secret. That's right. But I look at what he did as he was working more to pull the U.S. out of what other people started. And I can certainly recognize with that comes the collateral damage that George W. Bush created. I don't even I don't even necessarily want to blame Barack Obama for, for starting the wars that George W. Bush started. I'm with you there. But man. he did sign off on these things. Donald Trump did as well, and I think he should be held responsible. However, the reason I liked what Donald Trump was doing was that he was actively pulling it all back. Can I ask you something about the foreign policy issues? Because you were there documenting the Occupy Wall Street movement. The anti-war movement was a big part of the motivation for Obama's victory in 2008. Whether he said so explicitly or not, people had the idea this guy was going to get us out of Bush's wars and that kind of thing. Along comes Donald Trump, doesn't go to war, four years of peace, Putin doesn't invade anybody, and Abraham Accords, Abraham Accords and the North left Korean negotiations. Nobody gives him, I mean, I, I shouldn't say nobody, there's Glenn Greenwald, there's a few Crushing other people. Crushing ISIS. There are a few other people who give him credit, but the left for whom this was the issue, or so I thought, decided that they had to get rid of Trump. And now we've got Biden risking pro. on every front. Yeah, pro-war as they come. So, I mean, what happens to the anti-war movement? Where is the left with this? Did they just forget about it? Do people mumble and walk away? What happens? I feel I, half, I could be part of, of that movement. Faking it. I'm part of that movement. I feel like it is unstoppable that the military industrial complex controls our country and that it's we're just in a military autocracy and and stop, full stop. I don't know what else to do. I used to dismiss that view, but when I see just observing the FBI interference and the intel leaks and the Russia collusion plot and how there was the Hunter Biden Russian disinformation letter and this collusion between elements of our intelligence community and the Democratic Party, I can't dismiss that anymore. I feel like, well, we have this democracy, but it's as much as they allow us to have. And you can't elect the wrong candidate. Otherwise, as Chuck Schumer warned, they will get at you a hundred different ways and just pull it out from under you, which is what they did. But I mean, but how do you look at that? If you're on the left, how do you look at that and say, wait a minute, the, I don't the, like Trump and I, I can even think he's a racist, but I can't go along with what they, they're doing to our country. You just, the, the left doesn't have principles. There, 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 is no, there is no moral framework that exists among the left. In fact, I think what makes the left distinct is a clear lack of a moral framework. That's it. But I have friends and relatives who are leftists and they believe these things with good intentions. They believe they have a moral framework. I can't say to them, well, you disagree with me because you have no morals. No, 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 <laughs> you know but, but, I mean? but they don't. <laughs> right. So, so someone's arguments are different from what they actually do. So like they have no legitimate reason for supporting war with Ukraine. None. There's no more. There's no moral basis for that. Well, the, it's the N fear that he's going to go from country to country to country. And this is the first one like Hitler went into Poland. Kind but of. there, there, there's no... Unless you outright say, like, I think the United States should take over the world, should be actively, you know, et cetera, et cetera, empire, nation building, whatever, you can't be on the left opposing George W. Bush, opposing expansion of war, and then be supporting Ukraine. That proves you have no moral framework other than there is no truth but power. Lately, I've been like, well, I've stopped taking the, the view of, hey, stop doing the war. Quit that. I, I no longer do that anymore. Now I'm like, how can we redivert? resources so that the military industrial complex can remain super profitable yeah, but and we can ally with Russia and make more money for everybody. Like well, there's got to be a new, not just stop and don't, that won't work anymore. It's, right, it's, right. it's moving. So uh, I, I'm sorry. I lost what I was saying because You'll I was listening it. to Ian. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, you know what? Just <laughs> sorry. I have a different, I'm not anti-war. I'm one my, of the my, my point yeah. real quick. I, I, yeah. I, I was, I wanted to see what you hear what you had to say. My point was, the left has no moral framework because they say we oppose oh, George W. Bush. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I understand what you're saying. I feel like the reason that they're oh, I think that the left is okay with global government with a global government because the left is it, like the 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 left is where communism comes from, and that's the, and you don't get real communism unless you have like global communism. So I don't think that the the left isn't okay with that kind of stuff, and I do think that the left is okay with expansive governments and stuff like that because that's how you end up with a global government. Do you think but, the average but I don't think that the, I don't think that it makes I, I understand what you're saying when they when you say that it doesn't make sense for this particular war in general. Do you think the average Democrat voter supports communism? No, I think the average Democrat voter is the, is the is which, the default leftist, which shows there's no moral framework yes. among the left. I, I, you, you can I, say that some elements of the left are communist. Yeah. But when the majority of their voter base doesn't know or care or pay attention. Yeah, it's just no moral oh, framework. That's bet, the default. That's I think the, default. the difference between right. leftists Democrat, yeah. and Democrats is that. 
you can vote for the Democratic candidate and be completely politically ignorant, that then you're not a leftist. But if you're politically active and you're into that kind of thing, you become on the left. It's the activation of political ideology that puts you in a right or left concept. Whether you're well, a Republican or Democrat, what, you might just be completely apolitical. Andrew Breitbart called it uh, default liberal, I believe. Yeah. That's, that was the saying. That's, that's, that's what I think. They is, follow the, the corporate press. I think, he's, I think he, Breitbart was, was totally on it right with that. It, the Democrats, the party of the nice voter. So yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored, members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.